Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing AITX's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. AITX uses artificial intelligence technology to solve enterprise problems that are expensive, repetitive, difficult to staff, and fall outside of the core competencies of many companies. An example is monitoring a parking lot during and after hours and responding to problems as they arise. Another example is integrated hardware and software with AI-driven responses that can replicate or expand the current process. Also, automation of common access control functions through technology, utilizing facial recognition and machine vision. Its machines cost a business only $3 to $6 an hour, so it can help many companies reduce payroll. Instead of paying a security guard $15 to $25 an hour, just use the company's robots. AITX owns and operates a wholly owned subsidiary called Robotic Assistance Devices. Its primary strategy is to use AI technology and modern systems to transform the security industry. Mobile robots, indoor and outdoor, are part of the strategy. To fully realize the delivery of these solutions, a set of stationary robots were required. These stationary robots launched in April 2018 called Security Control and Observation Tower, or SCOT for short. SCOT performs many of the same functions as a stationary human security guard, plus many tasks that human guards cannot do at 15% of the cost. There is no known comparable solution available today that blends technology, usability, unique features, and price. There have been upgrades to Scott and other stationary robots have been built and tested. The company is headquartered in Ferndale, Michigan and was founded in 2010. It trades on the pink sheets. Let's get started with the model. This is a micro cap company, 121 million market cap. They're trading at 3 cents a share and they have 3.9 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. They have negative free cash flow every year since they have really small revenue. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That is positive in 2018, negative after that. Revenue is a sales for the company and is growing a lot on a percent basis, but it's growing very little on a dollar basis. It's still under $1 million in a 12 month period. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales. Here is a breakdown of their 2020 and 2021 revenue. A majority of their revenue is renting out their robots. About 15% of their revenue is a sale of robots and the services that come along with it. Below revenue is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. Below that is their operating expenses and then their operating income and that's negative every single year. Here's a breakdown of their expenses in 2020 and 2021. R&D is about $400,000 and that increased from 2020 to 2021 by $46,000. That's from the design cost of Romeo, one of its robots. Also prototype upgrades of Wally and Rosa. These are two more robots in their system and they seem to use people's first names, Scott, Wally, Rosa, and Romeo. Their biggest expense is GNA, 2.8 million. And that's mainly professional fees, auto expenses, advertising, salaries and wages, travel expenses, and rent. Then you have depreciation and amortization of 121,000 operating lease cost of 9500 and just $553 on the loss on the disposal of fixed assets. They do have a bit of debt on their balance sheet, so they paid $3.8 million of interest on their debt, and the bottom line of the income statement is their net income. And the only reason they had positive net income in 2019 was a gain on the sale of an asset. That was a $26,000 gain. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. So they lose a few million dollars a year since they're not bringing in much revenue at this point. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. The $37,000 CapEx charge in 2021 
was due to the addition of fixed assets. They don't give much detail on exactly what this is. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. Of course, that's negative every year. They're mainly running their business on debt. They issued 2 million in 2019, 1 million in 2020, 4.3 million, then almost 10 million. So that is a little risky. When a company takes on debt, they have to pay the interest on their debt. Since they're not bringing in any cash flow, they have to take on more debt to pay the old debt. That's called a debt snowball. They'd be better off issuing more stock and diluting the shareholders so they don't have to pay the interest payments on that. But it is possible they're not able to issue more equity. Or they may just feel the current shareholders will be upset if they issued more equity. This is the equity section of the balance sheet and they raised $47 million from selling their business and they lost $67 million from running their business. So they're at a big deficit right now. This article seems to explain it well. Accumulated deficit can have several effects. Stockholders will not be happy. If you're looking to get more liquidity, whether through debt or equity, people are going to want to know why you have accumulated deficit. In this company's case, they're a startup. So that's okay because in the early years, you're going to lose money. As long as the company can build valuable products, which it seems like they are doing, then they can continue raising debt and equity until they finally get enough sales to cover their expenses. But if their products are faulty or don't sell well, that could be a big problem. And if that's the case, then it may mean bankruptcy is on the way. Let's look at the capital structure. They have negative 19 million of equity. So that means their liabilities are $19 million more than their assets. And their debt is 20 million. So they're 100% debt. And their WAC is 10%, which is the middle WAC on Finbox. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated seven years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year seven. That's 150 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $79 million. We divide that by 3.9 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of two cents. They're trading at three cents. So they're trading at a 53% premium. It's a sell according to the model. As you know, it's really difficult valuing a company with such little information. It can go either way. Their products can be extremely successful and they got tons of sales and they're a billion dollar company before you know it. Or they can struggle for a really long time or possibly a lot of competition arises and their sales aren't that high. So to calculate their future revenue, I just doubled it for the next seven years. It's really just a guess. You can make your own guess when valuing a company, especially one with such little information about revenue from the past. And the average company converts 10% of their revenue to free cash flow. So I converted 10% of their 2025, 2026, and 2027 revenue into free cash flow. And I assumed they would have negative free cash flow for the next four years. $109 million of sales may not sound high, but when you're under 1 million, that's a pretty big jump. So even if they get to 109 million, I'm still coming out of the stock price that's overvalued. But I understand people are investing in this company for the fundamentals. They may just be investing in the company for a quick flip. If that's the case, you can make money with any stock if you time it right. This is where the stock has been trading the past 52 weeks. The stock is up 2000% from this point to this point. Of course, the stock was really low a year ago, but look how high the stock got. It got over 25 cents. So you could have retired if you put $10,000 into this company back here and sold around here. Of course, how would you know that? But that's just a huge run up. There was a lot of excitement and it could have been part of a short squeeze. Also, the company was starting to get orders, but then there was a huge sell off and the stock price came way down. So it could be a really good buying opportunity, especially if it gets back up to these points. Their beta is seven, so the stock is really volatile. It's gone up over 2,000% in the past 52 weeks while the S&P is up 30%. The 52 week low is one one thousandth of a penny and the high is 29 cents. And the stock is trading below its 50 day and 200 day moving average. This is a really popular stock. Plus it's so cheap, you can buy a lot of shares. Over 40 million shares have been traded on average the past 10 days. All the shares outstanding are on float and hardly any are held by institutions. This is a really shorted stock. The short percentage is over 60% now. And it always seems like the stock has been highly shorted. Ever since it started running up, the shorts have really come out. I don't think they're expecting this company to last. 
A big positive sign is they're adding employees. That must mean things are going well if they're able to pay 50 people. And these are the biggest shareholders. I'm surprised the CEO and founder is not on this list. Let's look at their financial ratios. We can't look at a PE since they have negative net income. They have a really bad price to sell since their sales are so low. And we can't look at the price to book since they have negative equity. They have a really low current ratio and quick ratio, well below one. So they're really short on cash. They only have $3 million of cash on their balance sheet, but $11 million of current liabilities. So they definitely need cash to get through the next 12 months. If a company like Coca-Cola or Amazon has a current ratio of 0.4, I wouldn't really care. They have easy access to capital. This company does not. They have no cash flow coming in, and it's difficult for them to get debt and equity financing. And they have to pay really high interest payments on their debt. They're a high credit risk. They're probably paying 10 to 12% on interest. They're really undercapitalized in the trailing 12 months. They had negative 6 million of free cash flow. They have negative 7 million of working capital, so they're short $13 million. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of nine companies in the same industry as AITX. AITX is worse than average in every single category. They are a startup and they're not bringing in much revenue, so of course they have bad ratios. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 53% premium and I've seen some of their robots and it's just amazing. I think it's a no brainer for a lot of companies because it's so much cheaper to have a robot than to have a human and it's a lot more effective. With such advanced technology, it's really expensive to manufacture. Plus there's a greater risk of things going wrong. When you manufacture a simple product like a box of matches or band-aids, it's much easier and less likely there'll be disruptions in the production process. And this company can have a great future, especially if their products work as well as they say they do. And they've been showing them a lot on their YouTube channel and on road shows. And it just seems really amazing the technology they've built. I've ranked their free cash flow as one out of 10, their revenue three out of 10, and their ratio is one out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation, or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.